Hi, I'm Bart and welcome to Calm Funnel. Today I'm going to be talking about choosing an airsoft helmet and the way to set them up. Additionally, I'm going to be talking about benefits of using helmets in airsoft and I'm going to do a shakedown of my helmet setup. So why helmets are great in airsoft? The most obvious reason is that it will protect your head from any bumps, scratches and accidental headshots. Most helmet types will allow you for mounting light, IFF markers, night vision, headsets and a bunch of other stuff. Additionally, they will keep your head dry if there's no holes in them. Wearing a helmet while airsofting will give you an idea of what ballistic helmet you can get for your real life stuff. You will start getting used to wearing a helmet on prolonged periods of time and you will learn how to set it up for your needs. So what type of helmet you should get? Well, that pretty much depends on you. Both with high cut and low cut helmets have their pros and cons. Personally, I prefer high cuts as their best work with headsets, but we're going to talk about headsets in a minute and have the best overall ventilation so I can keep a cool head. Hearing protection and comms are two very important things, both in real life and in airsoft. Even airsoft active headphones will protect your hearing from loud noises like a grenade explosion while training force entry to a building with your friends. If you ever had any sort of airsoft grenade exploding near your face without hearing protection, you will know what I'm talking about. That sort of experience was the factor that pushed me to get my first set of active headphones. Something that you can't do with older helmets like PassGuard system is that you can't passively cool your ears while wearing headphones. To do that you would have to take off your helmet entirely, take off your headphones and this is when you will lose your comms. This is why having headphones mounted on side rows of the helmet is such a game changer. Most of systems allow you for passively cooling your ears while maintaining comms. In that case I just need to pop them off and I can still hear and I can speak on my radio. Tan helmets are cool, high speed and they are overall an iconic look of the GWAT era. Additionally, they look great on pictures on Instagram. But they have no real place in any sort of combat situation. Helmet without cover will give your position away the moment the sun shines on your head. And this is why we use helmet covers. Helmet covers are a great way to minimize the shine of a helmet and they will allow you to mount accessories like counterweight for your night vision system, IFF markers and all of the cool patches you can fit. They will do a good job eliminating that shine and they will fit well with your camis but to help you break in shape of your head down you should get yourself a scream. Scream is where it's at with camouflaging your helmet. You can make it yourself, you can buy it, it doesn't really matter. What should matter to you when it comes to scream is the color fits your overall camouflage and the area it doesn't obscure your field of view, you have a way to attach live foliage to it and it's well secured to avoid getting caught in the shrub. Don't overdo it and grow a tree on top of your head. You want to break up the shape, give your helmet some extra depth and texture while being observed from a distance. You've probably seen pictures of operators and influencers having everything but the Christmas light on their helmet. If you're new to this, don't copy what you see. Instead of that, ask yourself, do you need an additional red light source for reading maps at night? Do you need that IFF marker if you don't have air supports at your disposal? Everything you're going to put on that helmet will sit on your neck and in case of any trauma, those grams will equal kilograms for you. Even without any incidents, wearing a heavy helmet is bad for your health. Before putting anything on it, you should ask yourself, do you need it and will it be utilized during training? So what is my actual setup? For the helmet, I got the Chinese bump made by FMA and modeled after Oscar Marine Time. It's their thick and heavy version, so it's not as flimsy and light as cheap airsoft helmets. Additionally, it's actually rated and certified for some sport as head protection. It's a nice added benefit. It weighs about the same as a real Oscar and it works with all original accessories. On the helmet, I've got two layers of camouflage. First, there is M81 Woodland helmet cover, and after that, there is a DIY screen that I've made with bits of old uniforms, some netting, and a pre-made screen. For comps, I got my contact freeze mounted on sandrail mounts. The main cable is routed inside the helmet under the comfort pads. There are not real pelters. Those headphones were made by TaxKai, and so far is the best Chinese knockoff of pelters that I had. Additionally, I got my iPro rigged under helmet cover. I'm wearing glasses and night vision goggles by ESS are the best fit for me. So that's about it. Get a helmet, set it up for your needs and go and train with it. And if you ever thought that starting a YouTube channel is going to be easy, hit that like and subscribe button. You can also follow me on Instagram at Flannel. For those who stayed this long, enjoy the bloopers and different versions of this video. Your helmet... Ugh. Do it yourself DIY. Oh, oh.
never ending cringing. Ah, who's she? that your ears are sweating and kurva and your ears are sweating mom spaghetti <laughs>